Okay, assalamualaikum. Good morning. Now, as you all know, I'm not available this week for class, so I'm doing a pre-recording for you guys to settle on so that we can finish on the sales and distribution chapter. Now, in the sales and distribution chapter, we already done some sort of explanation on pre-sales activity. Now, there is a few more things that we need to go through until we end the process by receipt of customer payment, which means that you receive money from the customer and you give the receipt to the customer. Now, in terms of pre-sales activity, now, this is some sort of going to be almost 100% similarity with what is going to be written inside the lab exercise, but the lab exercise is going to be showing more steps. Now, you can refer back to your lab exercise for sales and distribution. Now, pre-sales activity, this is where you create master data for customer on the earlier part. Then you're going to do inquiry, you're going to do quotation, and then afterwards you're going to start with the second step that is sales order entry, which by means of SAP is that you're going to enter what you have already confirmed with your customer, what are the items that is going to be purchased, and also what are the services that you're going to provide in terms of that purchase, and the total pricing of everything that is going to be included for that certain sales transaction. Okay, now, oh my god, how do I do this? How do I go to the next screen? Why? So I understand I'm scrolling it. Okay, now, pre-sales activity. If you look at here, can I do it on my own left? Now it's allowing me. My God. Okay, now, going back. Hopefully I'm in control of what I'm currently using for this screen capturing. Okay, now, pre-sales activity. If you look at here, it's basically we're going to be creating and tracking customer contact and communication. Now, the reasons why we do this is basically we're creating a master data that is going to be used for future transactions. Now, if you remember last week, we discussed on organizational, organizational data, master data, and also transactional data. Now, organizational data is basically your organizational structure. How many different locations that you have that is stationed all the different operation of your company. And also in terms of what does those each separate locations actually doing. Now, as we also uh, see during last week lecture is that GBI, for example, there are two main locations. One is in the US, one is in the Germany. Now, in the US, it's basically most of the part where the business transaction is being done. On Germany, most of the research and development and improvement of the product is being done. Okay, so basically here we are talking about for pre-sales activity, we're creating master data. Master data of what? Master data of customer. Why is, is customer is being considered as master data? Because you're going to use it again and again and again for future transactions. Maybe on sales, maybe on payment. Depends. But the same customer information is going to be used again and again. Now, if we look at the other part, it's also going to be used in terms of conveying information for the rest of the process that is going to be done inside sales and distribution. For example, if you look at on the final line, implementing and tracking direct mail, internet and treat fair campaign based on customer attributes. Now, it's not just in terms of delivering, in terms of creating the customer, in terms of getting their internet info, uh, their email information, sorry, not internet information, email information, and also their sales information, so that in the future, you will be able to do some sort of what we call as a customer relationship management, where you're going to be 
looking at some of the campaigns that you can uh, execute with the customer in order to gain more sales like for example I'm guessing most of you already have some experience with CRM customer relationship manager it's not that you providing CRM but you are on the receiving side of CRM I'm guessing some of you have received birthday wishes from your uh, from your carrier when I say carrier I mean that your telcos you know maybe you receive free 4 gigs internet co quota for the month for the month on of your birthday so that is one example of CRM now other parts of CRM like if you're looking at some of the old-fashioned way of doing CRM if you remember when you go and do some business transaction in a sundry shop or maybe even some food and beverages shop they give you a card they give you a stamp and then let's say for example you able to get enough stamp let's say for example usually if you go to last time was I don't remember there was this generation before T life and I was a part of it oh those trees were sweet okay now back to the main topic you get enough stamp let's say for example eight you get a free, free drink that is an example of a CRM the old-fashioned way manual way but it's efficient you can get more sale just by providing one free drinks to the customer similar with any other organization you study what are their transactions that they have done with your company and then you can offer a better service towards them so in this part here other than basically creating and create and tracking customer you are also going to be noticing this part here in queries and quotation now in queries is the part where customer will ask for information and you will, will provide the correct information to the customer now for the example for for our case that we're going to be involved with is GBI customer is going to ask about certain bikes that they want to purchase that day uh, let me ref, uh, let me focus on the word would like would like to purchase uh, did I say one doesn't matter now they would like to purchase now would like to purchase doesn't really means that their sales is already confirmed which means that they are not exactly going to be purchasing from you so basically this stage is quite critical the inquiry stage and also the quotation stage this is where customer will ask for information you give them the information let's say for example the dxtr 1000 that is a deluxe touring bike let's say there are a few colors available and then also you give the pricing of the bike okay now then there is quotation after you provide the information you can basically do some sort of a pre-sales agreement between you and the customer now this is depend on the on the company policy now in terms of your during the lab exercise during the quotation stage you will be giving some discounts to the customer for purchasing some bikes in terms of quotation, this is where you're going to be negotiating with the customer to get a better, uh, usually customer is looking for better pricing, better service on your, on your side of the, on your side as the sales department. Now, in terms of here, customer will be inquiring information that is in query quotation, customer will be able to be negotiating for pricing now. Your action will be giving discount. Now, depends. There are certain other things that can be done by the sales customer just to make sure that the customer agrees to execute a sales transaction with your company. Now, those of you may also be considering free gifts. Depends. Now, moving on. The ultimate goal of pre-sales activity is to equip the sales technician with the information necessary to negotiate and complete the potential sale. Now, 
this is the important part of pre-sales activity CRM like if you notice the one that we already discussed a few minutes back now when we're talking about CRM is basically the part where you're going to be looking at how do they approach you how many times do they how many times already did they buy bikes from your company what did you give them what are the benefits that you gave them before this how much discounts that you gave them before this so basically these are the information that is currently needed for those activity in pre-sales so basically you're going to see previous sales how do you communicate contact information general company info and also you need to be careful in terms of credit limit and usage now this is the part where it's going to be showing the history of your customer credit you will see in terms of are they paying good money during the earlier stages of the sales let's say for example they are doing five sales in the past some of them are um, for example is just per transaction it's not being scheduled okay we will discuss on scheduled sales later during the uh, coming process of sales and distribution let's say for example five transaction five time payment on time so basically we are looking at a very good credit limit from the customer but if let's say for example the payment are being scheduled now sales one no problem sales two no problem sales three payment is being scheduled now five times payment let's say for example and then out of those five times the customer need to pay or being scheduled there are two certain transactions that are not being done on time so basically those are some of the things that you need to be careful with when you do sales you also need you're not just looking at to basically make sure your items are selling but also you need to make sure that the money is coming in if you're doing sale but the customer doesn't pay you exactly on time then it's still considered a problem correct okay now at the end of the day during pre-sales activity you want a 360 view a full view information of your customer but the thing is this information is basically the information that you have currently gained by interacting with the customer not being basically pump out of any type of external system no currently this information will be made available based on historical data that the customer has with your company now inquiry inquiry is basically information regarding the sales transaction so it's going to be showing how much will it cost what are the material or services available may contain specific quantities and dates maybe in terms of when you a customer looking to purchase some bicycle but certain bicycles are not really in stock for the moment so basically there's going to be certain quantities of how many are available and also dates of when the next model is basic uh, when the item is going to be restored but currently depend on what information that you want to show the customer that will be on your side of the system okay quotation the quotation presents the customer with a legally binding offer to deliver specific product or a selection of certain amount of product in a specified time frame at a predefined price so basically when you do a quotation is basically a legally binding offer which means that before the customer agrees upon what they're going to buy from your company is already in the quotation stage when it's already confirmed the customer is happy with what are the pricing the item the time of the term of delivery of that specific transaction then you will move on to sales order quotation is quotation information is almost the same as inquiry it's just that inquiry is requesting for information quotation after every single changes that you agreed upon based on the customer request print it out you have a quotation document that is a legally binding offer which means that if the customer agrees on the pricing that is being shown on that document 
that is being called a quotation that you see here if they say yes then they are already execute the sales transaction so you can proceed by providing the price providing the delivery terms providing the expected delivery uh, date so and also the pricing okay sales order sales order processing can originate from a variety of documents so basically this is depends let us go to basically a new sales order before we go into discuss all of this here let us go to a new sales order a new sales order is basically the confirmation of a business transaction a sales transaction that is going to be executed with the customer depending on what item that's needed to be uh, made available and also the quantity and also the delivery and pricing so quotation is the start of the sales transaction sales order basically confirms on what the customer already agreed to buy now if for example from what you are seeing here sales order processing can originate from variety of documents and activity this is let's say for example for the next sales order that the customer would like to execute basically if they were returning customer then that's looking back on the first step that is pre-sales activity do you need to recreate the customer no it's already been created do you need to redo the inquiry depends if they are looking to buy the same thing for the second time then you don't need to do the inquiry you don't need to do the quotation you can just proceed with the sales order if it is agreed with the customer now this is the process of sales order it's not that each new sale that is needed to be executed you need to start from the first step of sales and distribution process from creating customer to inquiry to quotation and then sales order no it depends also on how you interact with the customer if the customer is a returning customer do you need to create do you need to create back their customer information no because it's already inside the master data do you need to recreate the inquiry depends if they are looking for new items then you need to do another inquiry but if they are looking for the same item again you can just proceed to sales order if they were to look for to purchase the same item but they are looking for a better offer should you start with inquiry no you should start with quotation and then sales order depends on the process itself so basically here if you notice now sales order can start from either create customer uh, sorry sales and distribution process can start with either create customer or inquiry or quotation or sales order depends so that would be a good question for the midterm hopefully you get that that will be a good question for the midterm i repeating it for the second time and hopefully i'm going to repeat it for the third time that is going to be a good question inside the midterm hopefully you heard that okay now moving on the electronic document that is created should contain the following information so basically if you're looking at the next part this are some of the information that is shown inside a sales order basically it's being broken down into three major information that is the header data the line item and the schedule line item now header data is basically the ones that is going to be referring back to the master data that is you that you have created now and then the line item is basically the different items that is going to be delivered to the customer so if you look at here the customer is buying two types of buy first one dxtr 1000 there are five bytes they are buying and then the second one is prtr 1000 two that they're going to buy professional touring bike and deluxe touring bike in total there are seven bikes that they're going to be purchasing from your company schedule line item is basically showing when is the delivery date for each item this one depends so the schedule line item is going to be closely related to the process after sales order which is on the delivery part 
of this process. If I'm not mistaken, you're going to be executing in your lab session two different deliveries. If I'm not mistaken, I need to be refreshing my knowledge on the lab exercise. It's been a while since I do the SAP lab exercise. Now, sales order will also contain information. Delivery schedule, when is it supposed to be delivered? It depends. It, it can be one delivery, it can be multiple deliveries. Shipping point and route determination from point A to point B. And also the route, basically. So, I'm guessing you're going to be using shipping points, uh, stating that from which... Um, the origin, uh, the point A of the delivery and also point B that is the destination of the delivery but route determination I'm guessing we're not going to look into that during the lab exercise availability check now you want to check whether the items are there or not yes it, how, how am I supposed to say this in terms of common sense before you execute things sales you need to check whether the item is there or not but currently you're going to go through the exercise and going to see a different situation now transfer of requirement to mrp this is not inside of sales but it's also an integration with material material planning this is where you already know that there are going to be seven bikes to be sell and uh, seven bikes going to be sold now you are running low on seven bikes, five deluxe touring and two professional touring. So basically, you need to reorder or basically reassemble the bicycle for replenishing your stock. Make sense? Yes. You already sell stuff. Uh, sorry, you already sell stuff. So basically, you need to make sure you have other items to be sell. If not, future customer who comes into your company and say, I want, an, I want a deluxe touring bike, 10. If there is enough stock, then you should be able to deliver on those orders. But if not, then you are in trouble. Pricing and also credit limit check. We're going to have a look at pricing and credit limit check later during the end of the slide. Now, delivery schedule. When an order is created, order that is referring to sales order, you must enter a request delivery date. Now, notice here. In terms of when delivering, we going to be basically play around with dates. Not basically just input one date, then that date is going to be the end, it's going to be the confirmed date of the delivery. Now, during the lab exercise, you're going to be inputting multiple dates because this is basically gives you a, some feel in terms of role playing as the sales department different situation that you need to go through when you want to complete a certain customer order now the system will be determining the delivery timeline whether you're going to be able to basically you can insert a date but you will also be advised by the system to see whether those date are realistic or not and also the system will determine uh, the date using forward and backward scheduling rule you have defined now basically the forward and backward scheduling rule is basically something that is inside ACP for the purpose of determining the delivery date of certain items now the, this is an example you can see basically from backward scheduling it started from the request delivery date you're going to be seeing it's going to go backwards from the requested delivery date until the order date now if you look at forward scheduling okay i'm guessing that during the lab exercise we're going to be doing forward scheduling we're not going to be doing backward scheduling because currently uh, if I'm not mistaken, you're going to be changing the delivery date. Yes, you have an initial delivery date, but because of certain material limitation or basically on certain, if I'm not mistaken, it's not, uh, it's not basically because of, I'm guessing it's because of the limitation in terms of the numbers of material. Okay there will be a new delivery date that is going to be assigned inside the lab exercise now 
this one you're going to be experiencing during the lab exercise you're going to be doing forward scheduling which means that you determine the earlier delivery schedule but depending on the material availability itself you're going to be basically revising on the is it on the material or is it based on customer request basically both of them could also happen basically it would be depend on the stock that you have that could happen and it also depends on the customer if the customer requested for a different delivery date maybe they have problem with the initial delivery date then it's going to be a new delivery date could also happen depends now shipping route and route de uh, shipping and route determination sorry now you have to remember GBI is basically a very large company there are a few different locations where GBI is being stationed in the US now for example uh, if you we can try to discuss different companies but then maybe we can discuss it during the lab but in term of here during a pre-recording session I'm going to just discuss in term of GBI but for future reference, maybe we can discuss other company. If you would like, I could take example of Felda as another case company that we could discuss on basically on their sales and distribution. For finance, I don't really um, have much of insight regarding Felda. But maybe on shipping and delivery, we can do that now. Okay, now. For shipping and route determination, let's say for example, in terms of if I'm not mistaken... GBI US, if I'm not mistaken, there is a few locations that we need to be careful of because currently, depending on where the customer is living in, where is the customer address, is the delivery address, you need to make sure that it's being delivered from the nearest shipping point. Okay, you need to open a map afterwards now. Or would be better, better prepare a map when you are doing the lab exercise because currently you're going to be delivering if i'm not mistaken is it dallas or miami i don't remember but you can have a quick look inside the lab exercise and also open up the map so you can see basically the nearest shipping point for where the item is being delivered to the customer address so that is what is shipping and route determination you just want to make sure that the bicycle for this case is being delivered from the correct source of location and being delivered to point B that is the customer address and also it will be determined in terms of the shipping points of each line item now if we look at here this is an availability check so after you already decided on when it's going to be delivered you're going to check whether is it available for the customer now if you look at here in the screen dxdr 1015 still do not storing bike but is for the use of id 015 learn dash 015 now you notice here they are totally 95 which means that you have 95 bicycle at your warehouse now there are also other information here it's, let's say for example plant is in my mi00 mi is basically miami now there is also information as it's received and also issued now this information here is basically just showing that how much you have received from either a vendor or your production now here is 95 which means that this current location in Miami a plant in Miami currently receive 95 bikes issue means that if you are sending it to someone depends on whom but currently in the scope of our discussion here sales and distribution it should to customer customer already executed a sales order with five deluxe touring bike which means that in the future this will be changed from zero to five 
So in terms of delivery, you have this diff three different type: one time delivery, complete delivery, basically. Uh, rules are created by you depends how you want to utilize this system to make sure that the item received the um, the item is being sent to the customer the customer received the item and the customer is happy with the transaction it basically depends on how you use the system yes the system already predefined a process just now we already see the cycle starting from pre-sales activity until receive payment but that process can be manipulated by the user. It's just a process. Whether how you use the process is depend on you. You want to follow it by the book, you can follow it 100%. But if you think there are certain things that can be skipped, depends on you. Like for example, just now, we already stated there are a few starting point of sales and distribution process depending on the situation. It could start from Customer creation, it could start from inquiry, it could start from quotation, it could start from sales order. Depends. Now, pricing information that is shown in the document is basically how much the customer will need to pay. But also, it's not just showing the total, but also the different line items that are being priced at for each item. Now, common practice inside of SAP information will be section uh, will be sectioned to either header or line item depend uh, basically that is sorry it's not depends it's basically the current practice of sap now depend uh, now in terms of seeing here the system will automatically search for price discount surcharge calculate tax and freight this item here is all based on your input and also historical data that is being executed with the customer. Like what we discussed just now, for your lab exercise for sales and distribution, you will be applying discount. And also there's going to be also, wait for it, taxes. Mm -hmm. Okay, credit check is basically checking on the customer credit uh, I'm not really sure on this I'm not really an expert in terms of finance but we try to see here during the sales order process the system will alert the sales rep about the customer credit situation that is arise if necessary the system can be configured to block order and deliveries so let's say this is will be depending on how the customer is doing their payment or monetary pros, uh, monetary transaction with your company based on previous sales if there is a problem and the customer will the customer will basically be uh, sorry it's basically we need to be careful with the customer now we are human beings we can forget we can mislook but the system will help us in terms of block the order or the delivery depending on the customer credit check who would ever if possible want to be if you have a problem with the customer if possible you would like to avoid them that is how business will work but the thing is customers sometimes even though they are problematic gives you good money especially in the process of sales and distribution. This is the part where money comes in inside your company. So even though you would try to basically avoid that certain problematic customer, they still give you good money. So in order to basically give some disciplinary or basically some enforcing some po company's policy the system will be able to block or uh, sorry to block orders or delivery shipping and also transportation just now we already talk about shipping and route determination that is basically stating Plan, uh, point A to point B. Now, shipping and transportation is looking at picking, packing, 
and also post good issue. Now, picking and packing, maybe you are already familiar, which means that you have physical human beings. Okay, now we're talking about before this, everything was in process oriented, everything was ERP oriented, everything was system oriented. But the thing is, at the end of the day, the groundwork still needed to be done. There is not actually any robot so that is going to be doing the work. So basically, people is going to be carrying the bikes and also packing the bikes. Depend on how basically it's being done. Usually, bicycles are being packed inside boxes. It's being separated into different components, put inside boxes, and then can be delivered to the customer. Now, picking, basically, people will be picking it. Uh, depending on the item, I'm guessing for... Our current situation that is GBI, Global Bike Incorporated, customers are buying deluxe touring bike and professional touring bike and I'm guessing when the human beings is going to be picking the item, maybe they're going to pick it using their hands. Not much machinery is going to be involved with packing, it's going to be box, it's going to be bubble wrap, it's going to be pelletized. What is pelletized? Have a quick, uh, have a quick look up in Google. Now, post go issue. Post go issue is basically you're going to start changing the ownership now. Changing the ownership of the bicycle from your company to the customer. Why do we do this? Just to make sure that if let's say this is one order, let's say you have 100 orders still needed to be processed. So from here, we already put, uh, put to the side this is the five deluxe touring bike. These are the two professional touring bikes that is for this customer. So that is will not be counted as the total stock that is inside your warehouse. This is already going to be delivered to the customer. Like before this, we already seen the screen. You have 95 deluxe touring bike. So during the post go issue, from the 95, this part here, even though the bike is still in your warehouse your number of stock is going to be lessened from 95 to 90 this happens even before the bike is being shipped out but it's already start being picked it's being it's being removed from the exact location where is it being saved inside the warehouse it's being packed and also you're going to post good issue this is going to be integrated into material management, uh, warehouse management, and also finance module. Material management on material master, warehouse management on the, basically where is the exact location the item is being stationed at, how many is it, how many is it being deducted with, and also in terms of finance, how much money that you're going to be making from this transaction. Now, depending on how you're going to deliver it, if there is multiple sales order and then you're going to have one order, can be done. If you have one sales order and then you're going to have three delivery, also can be done. And at the end, you're going to be having complete delivery. One sales order, one delivery order. Now, delivery creation, you need to basically make sure. If you notice, there's going to be this kind of checking again and again and again on different step of the sales and distribution process. Now in terms of here, if you notice, check again, confirm availability. You need to make sure that it is available. You're going to confirm on export or foreign trade requirement, but currently here for GBI, this is not being done because currently the customer is in the US. And also your company is in the US. Export of foreign trade currently doesn't apply there. Total weight and volume, this will be used for delivery uh, for the delivery information. Like bicycle is not such a big problem. It's small. And even a one ton lorry can transport your goods from point A to point B. But how about something even bigger, something even heavier? So total weight and volume is an important part of the delivery creation. So these are some of the information that is will be generated, updated, and also concatenated inside the system.
Okay, in terms of this slide, delivery document, this is just stating that from the all the information that we have discussed regarding delivery is going to be showing inside the delivery document. Now, picking quantity based on delivery note. So basically, this will be talking about picking. How is it going to be picked? Loading and also good issue. This is the part where we already discussed during the earlier stages that is on sorry okay then we move on picking loading and packing post good issue okay billing the billing document is created by copying data from the sales order or and and or or delivery document that is order Base billing, delivery, base billing. And the billing process is used to generate customer invoice. So basically, in terms of here, we already have all the information. You already see what are the information in, that is made available during the inquiry, what are the information that is being made available during the quotation and also sales order. So basically, from there, everything will be accumulated inside the billing so that we know how much the customer will need to pay. So, in terms of this point, it's just making sure that the customer is paying for it. Depending on how, what are the methods, these are the three different methods that is basically being made available inside SAP. So, you can be basically based on invoice, uh, collective invoice, and also split invoicing. So, basically, each from one to one, many to one, or one to many depends customer will make payment during the final step of the sales order and also at the end basically you can check every single step that is being done from inquiry to quotation to sales order to outbound delivery to picking request to good issue to invoice and then you can finally check the accounting of your company invoice this is the part where the customer will be paying this one you're going to be checking on your company accounting okay so that is all for the rest of the slide is basically talking about s4 hana so the next part of the slide is basically we're going to talk about your project your final project okay not here so basically i'm going to stop recording okay thank you very much see you on the next slide